It's time to wake up with a nice cup of morning roast. Featuring the Fillmore's finest, Monte Hill. Uh -huh. The pride of the Excelsior, Joe Butcher Boy Shasky. You listen to 95.7 The Game, the morning roast. Aw, oh, man. You two, Chad, is fired up for this. They're ready for things to be spiced up a bit here on the roast. As we say good morning to everybody out there, go ahead and hit us, but only for the first time all season. The one and only D Wright's back. He runs South Beach. Go so holler my boy Miles at Prime 112, the owner. Definitely drop my name. I'm always good in the MIA. He has his own commercials. Thought I'd spice things up. He's now taking over the dial as our 95-7 The Game Warriors insider. Hey, Bonte, I don't play basketball no more. <laughs> I'm a full-time golfer. Hey. Okay? Here's Darrell Wright. It was good to have our main man back on the set Monday. Of course, he was with us Wednesday as well, and he'll be back throughout the season, of course. Uh, as he was coaching the kids, he was out there helping out the youth, but D. Wright is back, and he's back on the roast. D. Wright, what's happening? Fellas, 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 man. Hi. Thanks for having me back. I feel, it feels good to be back. Hey, you know, we missed you during baseball season, but we really didn't miss you during baseball season because the Giants were scuffling and the Dodgers were rolling. But as soon as the Dodgers lost, oh, we were back to talking that smack. But, you know, we don't have we don't have many things to say about baseball. We'll cut straight to the chase, man. How's the golf game? The Roasters want to know how's the golf game going these days. Oh, uh, man. You know, I, I had a little injury, not going to lie. I was on IR for about a month, so I'm back out there. You know, the game is getting there. I think once you get hurt, you know, you come back, you kind of swing easy, you <laughs> hold a little bit better. So I'm, I'm getting better. You need to talk to Shasky about injuries, man. He gets hurt every other day. He's got foot <laughs> issues for playing softball. Wait, time out, time He's out. got hip injuries. Durrell. He's had concussions. I mean, this guy's had a litany Explain of injuries. Explain to Bonte that when you're an athlete, you're going to be more susceptible to getting injured. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It's part of the game, right? Thank you. But but there's certain players who are. He wouldn't know though. He's no, never no, no, strapped no. it up. No, no, no. There's certain people who are injury prone, oh, and there's God. guys who just they have nagging injuries. He's injury prone and has nagging injuries. I play injuries. through them. I play through them. <laughs> I play through them. And Durrell, Durrell, I, I, honestly, you've been watching this team up close and personal for a couple of years, and I'm looking at the beginning of the season, just in general. What do you think the biggest issue is? Is it more like the X's and O's or the execution, if you will, on the court? Or is it just the vibe or do they go hand in hand? Because it feels like the vibe's off. Uh, man, I think I think it's a uh, it could be both, you know, um, one, you know, you, you replace so many veteran players with these younger players. And, you know, it just takes them a little bit of time to come up to speed. Um, you know, a big thing I, I, I see out there is the, de the defensive end. I think this Warriors team has been so good on the defensive end. Not only just individual defense, but just uh, more on the team defense and just flying around and just being more active. You know, I think they need to get back to being active and mm. flying around, getting deflections, getting easy transition baskets. And then, yeah, the vibe. You know, we know they went through something, uh, you know, before the season starts. Mm. And that's going to take time to get over as well. So I think the vibe got to have to pick up. And they definitely got to do a better job on their defensive end. Yeah, 0-8 on, on the road. And they have the fourth worst defensive rating on the road. That's before the Phoenix game when they gave up 130 points. So I'm with you there defensively. Then it comes down to shot selection offensively. And Steve yeah. Kerr has touched on this over the last two days. We heard Steph Curry discuss it the other night saying, hey, you got to let the game come to you. You got to yeah. let the game come to you. And right now it seems like Clay Thompson is not letting the game come to him. Too early to give up on him. But, boy, the shot selection the other night was rough to see from Clay Thompson. Yeah, this team has made a name, and you know they're they're the dynasty. Uh, how they uh, they're the dynasty because of how they play basketball on the other end, you know. And you always wonder why other teams don't do it. Ball movement, player movement, you know, high IQ guys, and you know I think they've been doing an amazing job these you know past eight years of being one of those teams that can play without having the ball, moving without the ball. So you just got to get better at getting those easy baskets. I think. Uh, throughout the years, we, we've been accustomed to seeing them getting those easy layups and then those open threes in the corner because the movement, you know, the ball movement, the hockey assist. And, it, and it's still funny because the Warriors, I, I, I believe, last game they were the number one team in assists. We're averaging 28 assists. 
Mm-hmm. So that that just lets you know they could be a lot better as well on the offensive end. Like you said, Bonte, uh, the shot selections and just getting better shots. Not a good shot, but great shot. Mm-hmm. And they have the they have the uh, personnel to get great shots every single time as well. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at like Jordan Poole right now, and I'm saying, man, like at times I see some of the charisma, and then at other times, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's over dribbling, if he looks lost, if he's out of sync, if it's the personnel. What do you make of the Jordan Poole inconsistencies thus far? Um, it could. I, I just think he has to just get out of his head. Of, and just go be who he is and play with his personality. You know What he does is enough for this team. What he does for this team, they need every single night. Uh, we know he's playing with uh, like three or four guys that hadn't played in this system. So I get that some time as well. You know, you got a bunch of guys that are trying to learn this system. So once they get that, you know, under control with that second unit, I think he would be a lot better as well. But I think Jordan Poole still, he has to come in and, and be the player that – we saw him last year help this team win a championship. So I think he'd get it. You know, when guys understand where to be at, you know, when to come set those screens in the paint uh, to get those open threes, um, when to cut, you know, how to get easy baskets, I feel like his game opened up a lot more. But until then, he still has to play with the same personality into those that second unit, you know, catches up to speed. Mm. Darrell right here on the Money Russell on 95 7 game, first year. First time all season, we talked to D. Wright as he's back on NBC Sports Bay Area. Won't be there tonight, but he will be there throughout the season. Our main man here uh, on Warriors Pre and Post Game Live on NBC Sports Bay Area. I want to get back to Clay Thompson for a second and just discuss his struggles because we all know D. Wright. I'm no shooter. Uh, we know Joe Shasky's not a shooter. You're the shooter of this group. Yeah. How, it, when you go through a slump, what's the thing that kind of brings you out of the slump? Is it repetition? Is it shots? Is it mental? How, what is Clay Thompson growing through when it comes to the shooting slump? And what are some of the ways you got out of your, got out of your slumps when you played? You know, it's funny. My last year in Golden State, I started the season off horrible. I think I was like 6 for 32 or something crazy. And, you know, I was just overthinking it, you know, just just in my head. And I couldn't couldn't get out of my head until maybe like the sixth or seventh game of the season against Miami. But I think it's just repetition. Continue to go in there and trust in the process. Like, Clay Thompson is one of the best shooters in the, in the whole world. So he just has to just relax and just keep getting those reps in. And it only takes one game for any shooter because he's going to go off and run off seven or eight uh, threes in a game. And it's like, hey, you out that slump. So it, it, it's, just, it's just any day now for Clay Thompson to get out of that slump. I think the biggest thing for Clay right now is just to get out of his head. And then those game legs, you know, you got to you gotta get that summer off of you. Those game legs start coming in. You know, you get the proper lifts in, get those legs strong, get them legs under you. So when you're shooting, you know, you're shooting more from the legs and not the arms. Is there a young guy that you'd like to see maybe get some more opportunities or m- more like runway to, to showcase what they can do? Yeah, hundred percent. I would love to see the three the three young fellas, uh, Moody, J.K., and Wiseman, at some point. But you know, they got to catch up to speed as well. They got to do the things that fit into the system. You know, Coach Kerr has called out. You know, things Moody needs to do. Wiseman, all three of them. You know, so they can go out there and just lock in and understand. Like you know, those minutes they got last year were good minutes because they were like spark minutes. Or yeah. you know, when guys were on uh, getting rest, they just got to be consistent. That's one of the hardest things to do as a young player in this NBA is be consistent, you know. And and a lot of young guys think scoring makes you consistent. No, mm-hmm. doing the little things, rebounding, defending, taking care of the ball, communication, all those things you got to bring every single day. And then when you score, that's extra for a team like this. Mm. Walk me through the beginning of your career. You, They said it on the broadcast maybe two weeks ago. You were the youngest and still are the youngest player ever drafted by the Miami Heat, which was incredible to hear out loud. How, when you were coming up and giving opportunities, what psychologically were you thinking when you were checking into games? Because it feels like when I'm watching the youngsters now, it's like, I can't make a mistake. I can't make a mistake because I, I might not play for two or three games. Like, how do they overcome that, I guess? And what did you do to overcome that? That is hilarious. That's what I was going to say. I used to go in the game and say, don't mess up. And we all know when you say don't mess up, what's going to happen? You're, You're going to mess, mess up. up. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I think, I think, when these young guys get in the game, they just got to take their mind off of scoring because I think that's just what what it is when you're young. You think about scoring. So just bringing the energy, the effort, rebounding, like 
that's what I used to try to come in and do. Like, I'm going to get every rebound in my area. Um, I'm going to make it hard on my man to score. I'm going to contest every shot. You know, I'm going to communicate, over-communicate to my teammates. And I think that helps you get into play because when you're talking, you're engaged. Uh, you know, when you're flying around, you know, you, those mistakes you're making, it makes it look a little better because you're playing hard. So I think just doing those little small things that no coach can coach or no coach should be able to have to tell you is play hard, play for energy, play with effort. So if you could go out there and play with energy and effort, fly around, over-communicate, I feel like those mistakes would be less because you're engaged in the game. You sound like a coach, D, right? Man, you're breaking it down <laughs> very well right now. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, Stephen Curry, your former teammate. I mean, you saw the early stages of Stephen Curry. You saw the light. And now what he's doing at the age of 34, 14 years deep, a 50-burger the other night. He's shooting damn near 60%. It's incredible. I've kind of run out of adjectives to kind of uh, describe Stephen Curry. I mean, he's just putting on the show. He's playing at the highest of highest levels. I've never seen him play better, D, right? Same, man. He's, he's doing his thing right now. And this is greatness right now. This is why great players are who they are. And it, it, it almost gives me like he's obsessed with just the greatness, you know, and just uh, being a winner, being a champion, you know, finally getting that finals MVP. You don't think Steph Curry want to feel that again? Mm -hmm. No, I think that's that's why great players are always great. They thrive into something, the game within the game, going another season 50, 40, 90, challenging yourself. So I think that's what Steph Curry is on. It's like, how can I challenge myself to be even more great? And it's been amazing to watch so uh, early in the season. Uh, that 50 ball last game was crazy. So just to, to see him out there challenging himself and having his own goal that, you know, he's probably not telling the people, but we all know he's trying to tra chase more greatness every single time he steps on that court, and it's been amazing to watch. All right. All right. We got Thanksgiving next week, seven days away. All right. I, I'm already in vacation mode in my mind, even yeah, though he's checked out yeah, on the right, 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 right. We got four. We got three more shows left. He checked out last Monday. Well, don't hate the player, hate the game. Uh, but the way I look at this, Darrell, is like everybody's family has their own intricacies of Thanksgiving. Some more dysfunctional than others. The Shasky dinner table can be quite insane. What? Uh -huh. Paint the picture for me. What does the Darrell Wright Thanksgiving family dinner look like? What's on the table? Who's there? What's the must-have for Darrell Wright? Well, we all know my wife is the king of themes and, you know, having certain things going on during holidays. So Shout out Mia. I think, this year, <laughs> yeah, I think this year is the siblings thing. So I think brothers and sisters, well, obviously my brother won't be there, but, you know, her brother and sister, my sister, you know, and you got the fried turkey for sure. Ooh. Uh, baked turkey, mac and cheese, candy yams. Oh, uh, Mia has a recipe for beans that, that uh, were in her family that she always cooks. And, you know, it's just a vibe. You know, mm -hmm. good times, you know, telling stories, going around telling everybody what you're thankful for. So we have a good time, you know, during the holidays, especially especially Thanksgiving, one of my favorite yeah. holidays. I'm looking Definitely forward my to it, favorite. to be honest. It ticks me off how everybody skips over Thanksgiving and they put the Christmas slice up before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving God. is the there best holiday. Go. No, it bothers me, I, D, right? It's like, come on, it man. Me too. Yeah, I walked into a store two day, a day after Halloween and they had Christmas stuff. <laughs> I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do, like, after Thanksgiving, we're all processing. I personally think the day after Thanksgiving is as good, if not better than Thanksgiving, because leftovers are just, I don't care oh, what anyone says. Yeah, Left leftovers, leftovers are best. It's the yeah, best. It's the I'm best. Like, I'm on the leftovers. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, no doubt. Are you waiting in line, <laughs> old school style, on Black Friday? Nah, I'm not. I'm not big in, on going to the shops, man. I shop, I'm an online shopper now. No, okay. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm an online shopper. The malls make me itch. Or do you have to break off uh, your son? Uh, you know, a little wad of cash or Venmo him in these days or Zell or whatever it is. Is he going to be going out and doing his thing? That's a good question, man. You know, I got a uh, emerging teenager. He's getting ready to be 15, so, uh -oh. so I'm pretty sure he'd be ready to go out there and shop and hang out. So I'm not. I, every day is a new day. You know. <laughs> Raising his young <laughs> young man. <laughs> Shout out Bishop O'Dowd. He's going to be playing oh, nice. on the varsity squad. Make the nice. varsity squad. Can't wait to see him play. Did he? Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Do they still got Brian Shaw's jersey up in the rafters? Probably. You know what? They they just uh, got a brand new facility. I haven't mm -hmm. been in there yet. So oh. I'm sure got Shaw, Hank. Okay. 
Raptors. Yeah, we played uh, every year. We play in different tournaments over there, and so they had this really cool gym. I don't know. Again, I haven't been in there in 20 years, but they used to have like an upper deck above the yeah. basket on one end, and it was just a cool, cool gym. Great vibe. Great history. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I'm super excited and proud of my, my oldest, Devin Wright. Nice. Uh, making varsity at, as a freshman. He's already done something I've never done. So That's incredible. The sky is the limit for him. No That's doubt incredible. About that. D. Wright, man, good to have you back on the roast, man. Yeah. Coach Wright, you got people ready to run through a wall, man. Yeah. They're filling your speech right there, man. Coach Wright in his hey. bag right now. Oh, and he's gone. Oh, I think he cut out. I think he cut out. All right, D. Wright. Yeah. Do one of the wrong right. I said so awkward. <laughs>